Shabbat Shalom everyone, enjoy the Shabbat. Um, I want to talk with you about agreements. When you were born, okay, well, some of you were born a boy, others were born a girl, okay. Now, I'm going to give illustration now, okay, I'm just going to give an example. Because you know of me, I like to give examples to illustrate what I'm talking about. You had Ellen. Ellen was a teenage girl, she became pregnant of her boyfriend. The baby was a boy. The boy was born. The father was a thug and a drug dealer. Okay? And what happens now, that boy grew up in a negative atmosphere. Why? Because the parents were not happy with the pregnancy. The neighborhood and the school was talking about Ellen. And also the parents of the, 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 the father were not happy with the child. So, because they were not happy with the parents, the child was viewed negatively. So that, bo ba that boy was born with a negative label. And people enforced an identity upon him. Because when, when you are a place in a category, you, you are being ident identified with something. So that boy, Peter grew up, but he grew up with a sense of loneliness and rejection. You see? He did, doesn't understand why. And when he was 20 years old, he began to notice that some people just can't talk to him. Some of his family members, both from his mother's side and father's side, can't talk with him. When they see him, they tend to back off, walk away. You know, Peter is quite successful. He has, a, he has a YouTube channel with a lot of followers. He is traveling around the country. He has a large, he has a standard uh, circle of friends. So he's not dealing drugs. He's not um, verbally abusive. There's nothing socially awkward about the guy. The thing is, however, he, but that feeling of awkwardness kept um, following him, you see, and it began to burden him. So, one day, he was talking about it with a cousin of his, and that cousin revealed unto him that when he was a little baby, they hoped that he would die because they didn't want to acknowledge his life, though to their negative view of his mother. Because his mother was a very rude and very impolite uh, young girl. And then many people wished harm under his mother and also upon him. And then, when after Peter heard that, he began to think about it, and then suddenly he rem he remembered that when he was just when he was around seven and, and eight years old, he re he remembered the harsh words some people were saying to, to him, accusing him of, of being a bad child, accusing him of being just like his mother, just like his father. He didn't pay much attention to it, but he, re he realized now that those negative words. And those and those those hateful actions of those people impacted impacted his emotions, and then he understood that because Peter is a Christian also, then he understood that what people did was they placed a spell upon him, and though because the trauma was not healed, demons were at, attracted to, to him. You see, now why am I giving this example? Because I want you to understand that when you were born, there were claims placed upon you. Not all of you are born in a circumstance like that of Peter. Okay, I understand that. Nevertheless, the world is a wicked, dysfunctional and hateful place. Okay, that's what the world is. To say otherwise would be insanity. Okay, yes, there are good things happening also. But overall, the world rejects Christ, so the world agrees with wickedness. Okay? 
So in a world that agrees with wickedness, there are wicked claims upon you. From the moment you were born, before you could speak, before you could talk, there were claims upon you. Based upon where you come from, a list of claims laid upon you, and most of them you agreed with. Why? You were just a child, you didn't knew, uh, uh, you didn't knew better, so you agreed with most of the things you, you hit. And because you did not fight against against it, you remained alive, because let's be clear. Humans tend to become violent when their claims are not ratified. They're selfish claims. So, you've learned also while well growing up that agreeing with other people is nice and polite. So, you tend to agree with them. You were not, as a result, you were not attacked and you received approval. You see? And even when people harmed you, whether it's by spanking or beating you with the belts or by lashing out against you, your environment would turn things around and blame you for being attacked. And you agreed with that also because you didn't want to be victimized any further. So you need to understand one thing clearly here. You need to understand one thing straight. Before you became born again, before you became a believer, you agreed with the world. Even if your environment was very hostile and harmful towards you, towards you, you agreed with them. So when you become born again, all those agreements need to be thrown out. And you ought to agree with Christ. And now get this straight. About that example of Peter. Peter is in his 20s. And a lot of people of his family... Uh, from his relatives, I mean, they avoid him. The reason they're avoiding him is because they don't want to feel guilty and endure the, the emotional and social consequences of what they did to him. Because, okay, his mother could have been a, a teenage slut that's whoring her out. That is a fact. And his father, indeed, was a talk and a drug dealer. You see? But that has nothing to do with Peter. His parents were doing what they were doing before Peter even existed on the earth. Yet, those people credited the iniquities of the parents onto the offspring. And they hoped that their predictions and their spells would work and that the child would turn out just like the parents so that they could feel relieved about the evil that they were doing. But now that the offspring, in this case Peter, did not turn out like his parents, now they have to explain all the bad attitudes and all the harsh words and all the child abuse they, they, they've done. And now they cannot explain it because they don't want they don't want, want to de- they don't want to change either. So now so now they are raging, raging against Peter because Peter did not turn out the way they wanted. So now they have to repent. And they don't want to repent, so now they just avoid him. Because they can't say to Peter, we abuse you as a child just because we hated your parents. Because those people have children of their own now, and those children are going to look at their parents, and they, you know, things are going to get very awkward, and families will fall apart because of it. I've given this example, this illustration, to make you think. Which claims of the world are you still agreeing with? <laughs> And better, which abuse done against you are you condoning? I mean, let me say, let me say better. Are you still covering up abuse against yourself just to appease the world so that they won't attack you? Are you doing that? Listen, I'm going to give another example. Um. Your first name. I don't care if your first name is Paul or Annabelle or Shishi. I don't care. The name you have as a result of your parents choosing a name that's common within their culture and within within their region. So your name is all that you have. Your first name is already an identity that was enforced upon you and you agreed with it. You became attached to it. So even your first name is an agreement. Am I saying now you have to give up your first name? No, I'm not saying that, okay? 
Your first name is just a name, unless your name reflects a demonic entity or something like that, okay, then you can choose to prefer to be called something else. I'm not saying you have to go through all the trouble of changing your name at the government and all of that. No, just realize that so now that you are born again, you have to agree with Christ, what Christ says about you. And understand as well, folks, just ask those relatives that abused Peter. And now they want to cover up their mistreatment so that nobody would see how rotten they really are. The same is happening with you, believer. Now that you are born again and you have the Holy Spirit abiding inside of you, now the world will have, will have to deal with your identity in Christ. And they don't want that. Because, listen to what I'm saying here. When you walk by faith, their claims are crushed and their social relationships will crush and their economies will fail. Because their economies and their social relationships are all based on labeling. Labeling not in agreement with Christ, but labeling against Christ. And it's all held together by a mythology. By naming abuse something else so that nobody will have to deal with the issue. Okay? So... You can expect that people are going to rage against you because you're operating but, uh, in agreement with Christ, with Christ Jesus. Just realize that when you operate by faith, when you walk by faith, I mean, and people rage against you, it's not your fault. I mean, it's very stupid that they choose to remain in agreement with the world. It's very insane of them to pretend as if they don't need Christ. Anyway, that's not your fault. You just keep moving on and realize you cannot drive out darkness with darkness. For example, um, I'm going to give another example. Um, you have this young woman. She's um, 25. She's a flight. Uh, she's just, what a flight attendant. She, as a stewardess, she's flying a lot. But when she was just a child, her older siblings rejected her and always treated her as trash. And their par her parents didn't do anything against it. And she grew up feeling rejected and also at school people noticed she was needy and they also began to ab abuse her too. And also the teachers permitted it. Now, after came out, when she entered high school, things began to change a bit, but she still had those broken parts in her soul she even became a flight attendant and now she's traveling a lot so she she's not that much in contact with those people people from her past okay now some of the people from her past are now treating her kind on facebook and they even talk and they even call her on the phone from time to time what's happening now those people are feel guilty they are they are confronted with themselves so now they will either try to cause some conflict between themselves and the victim in order to blame the victim so they can use it as an excuse or they try they will try to pay off the victim so that they can feel good about themselves and in this case um, the young woman 25 years old she basically how does it she is avoiding those people as much as possible and she's into some strange religion why she was attracted into that cult though to her own hatred because yes people did mistreat her but because she did not let go of the hurt the hurt the hurt turned into hatred and indeed the cult has people that do that treat her better much better than the people from her past but the thing is she's still lost there was one form of darkness that was enforced upon her she rejected it but now she is holding on to another form of darkness 
So is one form of darkness being driven out from the other form of darkness? So there's still darkness there. You see? And that's why I'm telling you now, if you're not saved and you understand that the world is fake, the world is all of that, but you don't agree with Christ, you don't become born again, and look, you can only drive out darkness with light. You can only overcome evil with good. You cannot fight evil with evil. It's not going to happen. So, I'm going to close this recording now. You agree with Christ. I'm talking to believers now. It's natural for the believer to agree with Christ. You have it in you to walk by faith. So walk by faith. You see? And realize, just as you agreed with the world because you were a sinner, now because you are a believer, you have become God's righteousness in through Christ Jesus. Now you agree with Christ. Okay? It's not a religion. It's not a burden. It's what is how you're supposed to be. That being said, you all, enjoy the Shabbat, and may the grace of Christ Jesus be with you all.